Hello YouTube, this is Sam from Tiger Schooling. In this session of the video, we're gonna talk about the rectus sheath. So in order to talk about rectus sheath, you must have a good knowledge of the muscles of the anterior abdominal wall. There are there are three main muscles, two uh there are actually four main or five, you know, four main muscles. There is one other muscle that is paramedals, a small muscle. But I, I'm telling you that you must have a good knowledge regarding the anterior abdominal wall, the muscles, and what structures come across. The, uh, after clearing that concept, you will be able to understand the uh, lecture regarding the rectus sheet. So before starting, I, I must tell that if you haven't gone through our website, that is www.tigeschooling.com, you must go there and check out our new blogs and and we'll be there in helping you, assisting you anything regarding creating your websites and all the medical studies and anything that is related to the medical sessions. So let's get started. So this picture might look a little bit awkward because you are not understanding what are these structures, but I'll explain them so easily, so confidentially that after listening to this lecture, you'll understand all these pictures and what is rectus sheet and all that in a very simple manner. So let's get started. So the rectus sheet is actually uh, the fascia, you know, some people call it the rectus uh, fascia or rectus sheet, same thing. So it's actually the aponeurosis of the three muscles. If somebody asking you what is rectus sheet, you know, you would you simply reply, reply that when the rectus sheet, when the muscles convert into the aponeurosis and the aponeurosis come forward in the abdominal region, like do you have got three main muscles the, on the lateral side, never say the most anterior muscle is not these three muscles. The main three muscles I'm talking about are actually the abdominus, uh, transverse abdominus, the external oblique and the internal oblique, they are actually on the lateral side. They are on the anterior side, but they are on the lateral side. So as these muscles uh, are from lateral to, as they move towards the anterior side, their fibers, their, their muscle fibers are actually going to convert into the aponeurosis. They are no more the muscle layers. They are con going to convert it to the aponeurosis. So this aponeurosis, uh, the, the aponeurosis of these three muscles that are coming from the lateral side, like from your side of your body, like, like you have got three muscles, and as they go inward, as they go inward, they kind of form an aponeurosis and they, the aponeurosis join together to form a rectus sheath. That's so easy. You got it? So what is rectus sheath? It's an aponeurosis of three muscles that is transverse abdominus, external oblique and internal oblique. So you, you would say that aponeurosis is formed by three muscles. We have two extra muscles that are remaining. Where are they? Why they're not forming the uh, rectus sheath? So you would say the rectus sheath actually contains two muscle. Formed by total abdominal muscles, five muscles. External oblique, internal oblique, and the uh, tra transverse abdominus, which form the rectus sheath. Other two muscles are the I'm sorry, I would, uh, the main five muscles are the, uh, you know, transversus abdominis, external oblique, internal oblique. The other two muscles are the rectus abdominis and the paramedals. These both muscles are actually, you know, are in the, in the rectus sheet. So you would say the rectus sheet contains two muscles. That is the rectus abdominis and the paramedal muscle. So this, these diagrams are, are, are the actually, we cut the body into horizontal, in, in a horizontal section and we view through up from the above side. Uh, what we see, we see these structures at different levels. And in this area, the green, the green color shows the rectus sheath. So if I say, wherever there is a green color, you would say it's rectus sheath. So the green color is actually your rectus sheet. So whenever I'm going to talk, I'm going to explain this picture, you'll be having to understand that the, the green color is actually your rectus sheet. So the uh, the actually the the rectus sheet is actually divided as it moves forward. So get it this way. This diagram shows when we cut across this region above the costal margin. Above the costal margin, when we cut through this structure, we get this diagram. As we cut through between, from the uh, below the costal margin and between the ASIS, which means the anterior superior iliac spine, in this region, wherever we cut, we get this diagram, which is which means between the costal margin and the level of anterior superior iliac spine, and below the anterior superior iliac spine and your pubis. Uh, you can see your pubis. Uh, this uh, in this area, wherever you cut it, you get 
this diagram and in this lecture we are also going to talk about the arcuate line i just forgot to tell you that arcuate line and because it's related in this diagram so we talked about it we study the rectal sheath in, in three different parts there is above costal margin between the costal margin and the and the asis and below the uh, costal margin and the asis <clears throat> so So let's just start from this session that is in between costal margin and level of ASIS. So get it this way. Above layer, the superficial layer is over skin. We have another layer below it that I haven't mentioned here. As we have got the uh, uh, fatty fatty layer. So skin fatty layer, I'm talking about this region that is between costal margin and the, the uh, ASIS. Remember that. Uh, this is only this this the muscle between this uh, uh, this rectus sheath is actually your rectus abdominis muscle rectus abdominis So this this is not attached. This is between the rectus sheath in this region. So this is rectus abdominis muscle what happens? Uh, this this point over here. This is your linear alba over here. This is linear alba so you understand it this way, this is the cut section of your body from the anterior side, like that if I cut your body this way and we are viewing this half in a, in a, in a, in a horizontal section. We cut the body here, this is the cutting, cutting like this and again we're going to cut it on the other side to view it from the above. So this diagram shows the other side, so this is the, in between we have got the linear alba. So this is the linear alba and as we go, we go there, we got, rec we got rectus sheath and on this side and as we reach more laterally, we got muscles out here. So oh here we got muscles, so these are the different muscles. Uh, I, would, I would rather name these muscles. So you would say that the superficial that one is the external oblique muscle, the a little bit the deep one is the internal oblique muscle and the last muscle is the transversus muscle. So these are kind of forming the uh, rectus sheath. So get it this way. The X in the in the session of between uh, the CM or you can say costal margin and level SS in this region, what happens? The rectus sheath is actually formed. Like a rectus sheath is actually over here is divided into two regions. That is the anterior side and the posterior side. So we're going to see the rectus sheath in uh, two uh, in two divisions because of the rectus abdominis muscle. So we divide them because of rectus abdominis. We divide the rectus sheath into two regions. So the anterior region at the anterior of the rectus abdominis the rectus sheath is formed actually by you would say the external oblique muscle number one you would say the anterior of the uh, anterior of the rectus abdominis muscle the rectus sheath is formed by external oblique and the anterior part of the internal oblique muscle so because internal oblique muscle is kind of dividing you can see in this picture it's dividing into two regions it's dividing into two sheets so one is going anterior one is going posterior so we would say the rectus sheet abdominal uh, the rectus sheet in the anterior mark in the anterior to the rectus abdominis muscle uh, muscle is formed by uh, two things that is the external oblique and the anterior part of the internal oblique in a posterior region you would say the posterior part of the internal oblique muscle and the transversus muscles aponeurosis so these are the aponeurosis the external oblique coming interior the transverse going posterior but the internal oblique is kind of dividing and providing its uh, anterior uh, interior aponeurosis fiber on the anterior side and the posterior aponeurosis fibers on the posterior side and they again merge to form the linear alba that is the kind of uh, all that in the in between you can find it so this is the picture on the in this area now we'll talk about above the costal margin so above the